Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, we are going to be making one of those fun number signs or marquee signs, whichever of you wanna call it. I am doing the number four and filling it with balloons for my daughter's fourth birthday. Let's go ahead and get started. I know that there are a lot of templates out there and there are a lot of them that say that they're free, but <clears throat> as we learn in life, not everything is free. Everything has a cost. It, either you have to sign up for a bunch of things, you get blasted with emails, this, that, and the other. I didn't want to have to worry about all of that, so I created my own template and I'm going to show you guys how I did it to hopefully save you guys some trouble to where you can just sit down and do it yourself. I am going to do it for the number four, but you can take the same process that I used in order to do the different numbers. I am doing a three foot sign and just using some computer paper. So the different supplies that you're gonna need, I'll have everything linked and <clears throat> sorry, listed in the description. Um, but to start out, I just grabbed some regular computer paper, some masking tape, um, scissors or a straight edge cutter. I like my straight edge because it keeps everything nice and straight and makes it line up a little bit better, <clears throat> excuse me, and then a pen or a pencil. You're going to start by, I knew that I wanted this to be three foot tall, so I wanted to start with the main um, leg of the four. I just started by combine, or taping together very carefully, I lined them up perfectly and put tape to um, connect three pieces of paper. We know that the normal standard size paper is an eight and a half by 11, and I wanted this to be three foot, so I did need to add an, an additional piece. After all three of my first pieces of paper were taped together, I then just took a tape measure and measured out how far, <clears throat> sorry, three foot would be. I put my next piece of paper right up next to that, marked where it needed to end, and then I was able to cut that with my straight edge. And just in case, you know, it's, you don't have a tape measure laying around or anything, so that would equal up to three pieces of the computer paper plus one three inch section of the next computer paper. So I left it the eight and a half wide and I just cut um, a strip of three inches. I taped that to the bottom. The next thing I wanted to do was work on the angled part of the four. Now with this, I didn't want it to be as thick as that main column because it would look kind of wonky. So we do want to make sure we're scaling it to look the way that it, just so it all looks symmetrical and not, you know, off-centered or balanced or kind of weird. I took two pieces of computer paper and I knew I wanted them to be thinner but not super thin. So I just measured those out to be six and a half inches wide. I took two inches off of it. So if you have your, your paper sitting vertically, it's eight and a half wide, it's 11 tall. You're gonna take two inches off the width. So it's gonna be six and a half inches wide, which means you took two inches off. So what I did is just took those two pieces of paper, went to the edge, measured two inches in. I created my line, you can use scissors for this. Again, a straight edge is a little bit better just to keep everything nice and straight and symmetrical. And I cut that and I taped those two pieces together just like I did that first column. Then I kind of just laid it on top because we're gonna kind of figure out what our angle is gonna be here in a minute. I then went back over and now we're gonna do that connecting brace at the bottom of the four. I went ahead and cut two more pieces of paper the exact same way. I just took two inches off the width, so now you're gonna have a six and a half inch wide by 11 sheet piece of paper, and I taped those two together. Now, the placement for those, I went below, so you have your first paper, and I'm gonna pull this up here just so you can see a little bit better. So here's my, here's my four. So one piece, two piece, where the third piece, the second and the third piece meet here, that's where I'm gonna lay my piece of paper across. Now I just laid it to where it stuck out to what looked good to my eye. So I'm gonna give you the exact measurements. Again, I'll put all of this in the description, but mine is sticking out just over four inches. So like four and a quarter inches. So I have those, those two pieces of papers we just cut for the brace or I mean for the crossbar, um, we take those together, then I laid it down over top, so one, two down, right across that seam, and that's what's gonna help me make sure I'm lined up, and it's just an easy 
um, visual cue for you guys to know where to line it up. So after I got those on there where I wanted, I went ahead and taped those into place because I knew that's what we needed. Now it's time to kind of make them overlap. I just kind of moved it to where the angle looked good to me and to my eye. So this could be where, you know, it might change just a little bit. And I prepped two more pieces of paper. So I prepped one to go bottom here and one that's gonna cross over here. Now it's gonna look really funky at first cause we haven't trimmed it down, but you just have to trust me, we're, we're gonna do it. So prep the next two. Again, by prepping them, I mean take two inches off the width. So we're gonna have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six of those six and a half by 11 pieces of paper. Um, and then you're just gonna tape it to each section, so your angled section and your crossbar section, go ahead and tape um, one piece to the angled and one piece to the crossbar, and they're just gonna kind of lay on each other for now and look kind of funny. But the next thing that we're gonna do is, <clears throat> excuse me, is trim that up and make sure that everything looks, looks good. So for me, like I said, I just kind of did this to where it looks good to the eye. You can do that too. Let me see what measurements I can give you. For the top on my corner, and by corner I mean this piece right here. This piece, this is my cross piece that's laying across. That is... about an inch and a half wide, so from the corner, right? So that can kind of give you an idea of the angle that I did. So you just go down until it connects, okay? And then you can go ahead and take them partially together if it, if it keeps it together for you better. And then what you're gonna do is use your, um, your ruler and either your scissors or your straight edge, and now you're gonna cut off the excess paper. Mine down here my third sheet down here ended up being six and a half wide. Basically, it's a six and a half by six and a half. I mean, it's a little less, but again, the reason I'm not giving you exact measurements is because your angles might be a little different. So what you're gonna do, and like I said, I'm giving you generic numbers for these last two, <clears throat> because it's gonna be whatever angle you choose. And as long as you just make sure you come over and cut this edge straight, it should look good for you. But just as a reference, this piece right here for me, my corner connecting on my, my straight bar here um, was about six and a half by six and a half. And then this paper, like all I did was kind of set it into my, um, <clears throat> into my straight edge and just cut it straight and it did all the work for me. So that kind of gives you an idea and you'll get all that excess off. So if you're not using a straight edge, just take your ruler, eyeball kind of where you want that straight line to go. You don't want to chop it off too too far. But like I said, a good measurement is you could measure, you've already taped that third piece to that straight bar. You can measure six and a half inches out, make a mark and draw a straight line across both of those pieces of papers where they overlap and just cut that line there. And it should give you a good visual. Again, that also depends on the angle that you chose to put your paperwork at. Um, I know it's hard when you don't have a template, but I'm trying to save you all of the mess of having to get one or to print one out and get it. But if that works best for you and you're not great at puzzles, I love puzzles and trying to figure things out. So this is what worked for me. Um, so yeah, once you're done with that, <clears throat> go up to the top and you're just gonna cut off that little point that's left on the paper at top. Just cut it straight across to match up with the top of your main like your main column of paper, and that's it. You just make sure it's all taped together so it's not gonna go anywhere, and then you're ready to move on to the next step. If any of that does not make sense, please, please, please just ask me questions in the comments. It's really hard for my brain to kind of comprehend 
how to tell someone else what I did. Um, trying my best here, and so yeah, I'll try to do it like a quick recap. We have one, two, three, full sheets of computer paper with a three inch, so this is an eight and a half by three inch on the straight column. From there, we have one, two, three, six and a half by 11 pieces of paper. And down here, we have one, two, three, six and a half by 11 piece of paper. Once we get this lined up, this one is lined up where the, the second and the third um, down meet right on the seam. You can see it bends right there. And this is about, I think I said five inches out. Um, let me double check. About four and a quarter, sorry, about four and a quarter inches out. And then the complicated part is just over here when you need to um, cut this off. So all you're gonna do is come to the seam, measure about six and a half inches out, draw a line and cut that flat. Should give you a good look if you're following everything else, even if your angle's off a little bit. It should still work out, but again, that'll kind of change depending on what yours looks like. And then at the top, you're just going to, whatever extra paper you have up here, after you've got this figured out, where it lines up, you're just going to cut that flush with the top of the four there. Make sure everything's taped in place so where you pick it up, it's not going to fall apart. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, I will put how many pieces of paper and sizes down in, in my description to hopefully make that clear for you. Um, and if you have any questions, just definitely ask me in the comments below. I'll do my very best to help you make sense of everything. Um, it's really easy. It just seems more complicated, I feel like, than it is. Um, all right. From there, we're using the Dollar Tree um, foam board. I used basically two and a half. Two and a half? Yeah. Two and a half foam boards. That's not a lot, guys. That's like $2.50. That's fantastic. All I did was I took it um, and lined it up on the first board. I lined the column completely, you know, flush with the side edge and traced the parts that I had. And then I went ahead and marked on my paper, like where the edge of that poster board ended. So I know exactly, like if anything shifts, exactly where my next poster board to patchwork in would fit. So by that, I mean like, you can see this line right here, that's where my poster board stopped. So all of this had already been traced. This section had not. It was just a visual cue for me, but you're gonna be kind of butting them up next to each other. So it's really not that big of a deal. You're gonna either want an X-Acto knife or a box cutter, and you're just gonna trace very carefully. I didn't have anything underneath this, and I was just doing it on my floor. But my floor is my craft room floor. Like we purposely didn't make it look nice or anything um, because we knew I'd be beating and banging and dropping paint and stuff in here. Do not do this on your nice floor. Don't do it on your carpet. Make sure you have something underneath. You can put a cutting board underneath because if it goes through, it's gonna cut whatever's beyond that. So please be careful and then just be very aware that you don't accidentally cut yourself. Um, once you get that out, um, usually it'll go through, but not all the way back through the paper. So you might have to go through it again. What I found is easiest on the parts where, you know, it can kind of bend away is I was just taking scissors and cutting it away. It just made it go a little bit faster for me. Personal preference, do what works for you. After I got that part, um, trimmed out, I just grabbed the scraps that I had from that and kind of pat patchworked just to use as little foam board as I needed to. And I just used some that would fit those areas I still needed. I made sure it was nice and flush up against the um, board that I had just cut out that already has the four part cut out. And then I traced the remaining area, did the same thing, cut it with my X-Acto knife and then got it pushed up together. I am just using packing tape to tape these together. You. The reason you wanna make as much of the four one piece as possible is because you want it to be nice and sturdy. And then the other parts, as long as you can use um, like white duct tape or a clear packing tape, those are pretty, My I think my biggest suggestion because they're nice and strong and then they're, you know, kind of would camouflage in. 
but do both sides of the foam board. So what I did is I would tape the seam on one side and make sure they're nice and close together and then tape around the edges and then the back side as well. It may seem like overkill, but if you only tape one side, it still has the availability to bend in, the, either in that certain direction and you don't want that. You want it to be nice and stiff and sturdy. I just repeated that cycle. I grabbed another scrap piece that would fit the area that I needed, traced it, made sure everything was nice and flush, then taped it together and so on. And from there, that's when we're gonna build our walls. Now, this is also partially a like preference of your own, but I did five inches. To me, just visually, that standing out that far, I knew I wanted to put balloons in them. I wanted them to kind of not be set into it. I wanted them to kind of stand out. So five inches worked perfect for what I want. I think it's a really good number for you guys to use too. You can, you know, and this doesn't have to be balloons. You can leave it a solid white. You could poke hole, drill, or like cut out circles and put um, like light bulbs through and like make it an actual marquee sign. Uh, flower honestly it's it's whatever you want to put in there stuffed animals it would look cute with just about anything but so I'm doing five inches you can adjust that to your needs if you know say you're doing light bulbs and you only wanted to do three and a half that works too whatever works for you so I cut five inches and what I did is I just um, took the board measured five inches all the way down, used my ruler to connect the line, and then I used my X-Acto knife to cut through. Again, I bent it and then cut it with scissors. You can do these all at the same time. I didn't quite know how many I would need, so I just cut them as I needed them. And then I was ready to adhere them to the base. To do this, I am just using my hot glue gun. Now, I would say you would want a bigger hot glue gun because you're doing long beads at a time and just over like pumping or constantly refilling your glue stick. I mean, it will work, but it might be a little bit annoying. To do this, you're just going to, I didn't pay attention to which edges I had out front. So just pick whichever edge is cleaner to set on top to be like the front facing. I don't really think people will super notice it, but if you're not like overfilling it to where things are popping out like on mine, people may be able to notice it. Just wanted to clarify that in case you wanted to pay attention to it. I just took my glue, I cut it down, basically laid it beside it and anywhere that where there was a joint where it would need to bend or be cut, I just laid it down flat beside it and made a mark, used my ruler to make a straight mark, and then I would cut the board. Now, you can do individual pieces. So you can cut a piece for this part cut a piece for the angle, cut a piece, or if you wanna make it a little easier on yourself, you can cut a piece and have it bend around to the next section. I did that on some pieces and I did it clean cut. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier for those corners and it makes it a little sturdier in my mind. So just keep that in mind. Um, to do that, you're just gonna cut through and when you bend it, instead of cutting that piece off like we were before, you're just gonna leave it like that and then it'll bend around that that corner nice and clean. You're just gonna run a bead of hot glue all the way down the bottom, and then you're going to adhere it down. Just be very careful, the hot glue does give you a little bit of leeway, so you it's like a hurry up and wait kind of situation. You wanna move fast enough that the hot glue is not drying on you, but you don't wanna move too fast that you're being super messy. Um, it gives you a little bit of leeway to where you can like, you know, if you set it in too far, you can kind of scoot it back all the way to the edge. And then what I was doing, which don't don't always do what I do, guys. I have those pink thimbles, like silicone thimbles for hot guns. I didn't even use those, but I was letting it mostly dry and then running my finger down the outside edge just to kind of smooth it and make it look really clean. Um, you don't have to do that. That was a personal preference as well. Once it was dry and nice and sturdy, I was going on the inside seam and basically putting a whole another string and bead around that just to make sure it was nice and secure and not gonna go anywhere. And then we're just gonna do that through the entire thing. You're gonna measure which side you need, cut it down or cut partial and bend it to the next section, whatever works for you. Um, note that if you have a long piece and say it's gonna come down here and it's gonna bend this, it's gonna bend you know down and then all of a sudden it's gonna bend over to the right again, you're gonna cut on one side so that it'll bend this way, and then you're gonna cut on the other side so it can bend this way. 
if that's too complicated, I kept not paying attention. I did this late at night and I was tired and I was just like, I'm done. So I would just, I would do one corner and then cut it and then start again because my brain was just fried at that point. But it did take a little bit of time, but honestly, I think it's completely worth it for the size of the display. I love it. Um, once it was all t like glued together and ready to go, if there's any like corners that you think need help just adhering a little better, you can just use, I used packing tape and I just put a piece of tape around that corner. It just helped me let that glue um, kind of sit and dry together because if you're trying to move on and do it faster and your glue is not setting, it'll kind of start peeling apart. So I just use tape to help me. I'm not worried about that piece of tape being seen. If you are, you'll just have to be a little more patient than me. From there, you just fill the inside with whatever you want. Again, I chose balloons, picked them up from the Dollar Tree. The colors kind of go with the theme of my daughter's birthday party. Um, you can do all one color, whatever you want. And then you just blow them up to different sizes to give some good contrast. What I did was blow up a bunch of them, kind of laying them in there as I went so I can kind of see how many I needed. And then once I was ready to start the layout, I just used masking tape. Now it's not super sticky. I did use packing tape in some other areas um, to help the balloon really stick. But you can do what works for you. Just know that when you put that tape on there, it's not coming back off, whether it's the masking or the packing tape, because it's going to pull and pop the balloon. Again, that's it. Nice. It's It sounds complicated, but it's really not. You just have to have a little bit of patience and make sure you set aside the time to be able to create it. But I think it's going to be a super big hit with your children. And like I said, you can do that. You can do letters. You can do numbers you can use balloons you can do flowers you can do stuffed animals whatever you need i will say i was going to use just like the vase beads or like rocks from the dollar tree i thought i had some at home i did not so i just used the bag of pennies and i stuck it underneath in the base um right underneath the balloon you can't see it but it's what is keeping it in place and making it self-standing you need to be able to put something heavy down there that way it will stand up on its own and not just topple over I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Again, in the comments, just let me know if you need any questions answered or if I didn't clarify something for you. Would love to do that. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful, if you think this is a cute, cute idea. It's all the rage right now, so people have to love it. Um, subscribe if you're new. If you're returning, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you being here. I wish I had pictures from the party, but her party is actually tomorrow. So I can post on my community tab if you guys want to see her and her cousins all having a good time. Love you guys. I'll take you in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.